Hey, welcome back to the channel. In this episode, I'm going to be installing the flooring. This is the flooring I like to use. It's a Traffic Master, the vinyl plank flooring. And you should be able to do the whole van with just four boxes. You can find flooring that's even cheaper than this. But for such a small square footage, this is a pretty good brand. The total price was $174 for the four boxes, so it's not really worth trying to save the money with uh, cheaper quality flooring. This is made out of uh, vinyl, and it has a built-in underlayment here on the bottom. And they just snap into place, and it's also waterproof as well, so it works really, really nicely in the van. So really setting the first row is going to be the most important. If you set the first row straight, everything else is gonna go in really easily. One thing to keep in mind, this is the groove side, this is the tongue side. You wanna start with the groove side out, tongue side facing that way. It just snaps in a lot easier that way than if uh, you had this flipped around the other way. First thing we're gonna do is to set one piece out right in the middle here, and we're going to scribe this piece here. Okay, so I cut this piece down to uh, 18 long here. Set it on top of this. And now we can scribe this piece. We've got a scribe here with a couple different options. This will go in here like that. Okay, I got this first piece cut in, and not gonna lie, it took three tries, uh, but now it looks perfect. A little advice I can give you, if you put something in and it doesn't look right, just redo it, because you're just gonna end up staring at it for the next couple years, and it's gonna bother you, so take the time now, get everything looking perfect, you'll be much happier later on. Now that I have the first row in all straight, Everything else should go in really quickly. And you may have noticed that I didn't put the bottom row of the walls in yet. It's gonna look a lot better if you put the floor in first. So the floor will go in, and then once I get all the floors in, I'll, I'll cut down that uh, last piece of the wall, which will overlap the floor. It'll give it a cleaner seam. One other tip I wanted to give when uh, putting in these floors Try and uh, stagger the seams. Don't just do like half, then a full, half, then a full, half, then a full. Um, it looks better when it's kind of more random than having a pattern like that. Same thing like what I did uh, with the ceiling. It just looks better not to have a pattern in my opinion. So now I'm just uh, putting the pieces all the way past the edge and then just taking a straight edge and making a line and, and cutting off the edge. Later on, after I put this uh, sink base cabinet in right here, I'll have a uh, trim piece that'll cover the edge. I am finding it easier to put uh, one full row together and then snap it all into place rather than putting one piece, trying to get the, this, this edge in and this edge in at the same time. So if you just put the whole row together, then it just uh, snaps in a lot easier like that. So if you find yourself needing to tap one of the planks in a little bit, you don't want to just use your hammer on the edge and damage the edge. So you can cut a little uh, scrap piece, you can put the tongue side in, and then you can tap here with your hammer, and it doesn't matter if you damage this edge, and it'll keep this edge nice and uh, finished for the next piece. We'll have one more little thin piece along here, then I'll have an aluminum trim piece here to cover this up and finish it off. Okay, I put the final piece in here. So the next thing I'm going to do is put a little bit of uh, gray paint on the wood here that's exposed. The next thing I'm going to do is put a metal 
trim piece to cover most of this and to also protect the edge when you're sliding things into the back here. So I got this aluminum angle piece from Home Depot. It's an inch and a half each side here and one sixteenth thickness. They also make it in one eighth thickness, but I think this is thick enough for what we're doing here. So now I'm just gonna cut it down to this size here using the uh, miter box. And I've still got the metal cutting blade on here. Probably wouldn't try to do that with the wood cutting blade. So that fits in nicely. So now I can uh, pre drill a few holes and we'll maybe do one, two, maybe four screws. And I'll use some silver screws for this. I'm going to use this countersink bit for this which makes a really nice recessed hole like that so the screw head should fit right in. screw heads pointing perfectly straight. Nice finished look. You can see why I painted before I put metal on. This should protect the edge if you're uh, loading things into here. Now that we have the floor done, I can finally put in the bottom layer of the walls all the way around. So as I cut these pieces to put in, I'm gonna paint them before I put them in. That way I won't get any paint on the new floors. All right, the very last piece of the wall going in. Now that the walls and floors are done, I think I'll tackle this rear section. This pillar here and here. We're going to cover that with this carpet you get from Home Depot, which I also used over here. Just spray adhesive it on. Also, we'll finish off the doors today as well. So it's kind of tedious. You just have to do each piece one by one, and then there'll be another piece here. Up here, we need to make sure it's removable so we can access the tail lights if those ever need to be changed. And also, we're going to fill all this with insulation before we put this in. You can save a bit of time making the other side. Each time you get a piece perfect for one side, you can flip it upside down and then cut out the piece for the opposite side. Okay, so you can see I've got it all in now and I just have the cutouts for where um, you would need to change tail light bulbs. 
and we're gonna use the stock cover on top of that, like that. But first, we have to put some carpet on the back side of this so you can't see through to the insulation. Okay, so next we need to glue this piece down to the cover. We need to make sure we glue the front side down. So we can't spray the glue onto the carpet. So we're just gonna spray the glue on the back mm -hmm. side of this and then stick it right to there. And we should be able to screw this piece right into the wall. Now to finish off the rear doors, I'm going to use the same tongue and groove planking to cover this as I used on the ceiling. But I need some support to screw into here. So we'll take some measurements and we'll cut some of these 2 by 2s down the size and try to match the angle of this and this. And we'll screw them in with some brackets. I cut this little scrap piece of wood to find the angles. So I've got a 30 degree angle at the bottom here, and then up top, and I cut away some of the insulation. Up top is 22 and a half. This piece should be exactly 27 long. So I have this in with these L brackets from Home Depot. And uh, this piece ended up being 26 and three quarters. The only problem is the door is kind of curved like this. So it lines up perfectly at the bottom and the top, but in the middle, this is uh, out a little bit. So I'm gonna have to mark it and, and cut it down. I think I'll just take this piece of wood and run it along here so I can make a mark, kind of scribe it to the angle I need to cut it down to. And then I'll need to remove that piece of wood, kind of cut off the front to the angle and then put it back. And then I can use that piece to make a second piece for the other door. And once I have it all cut down, I'll add some more insulation and then we can put the same paneling that's on the ceiling. So now I need to cut along this line with the jigsaw. So I'm just putting these boards in one by one. The first one I had to cut around the handle here. So I painted it first, so it'll be hard to paint around that handle. And I'm countersinking all the screw holes and just laying them in place. And you can use your square here, line it up with the next one on the bottom there. Make a little line, I'll cut it off. And just making the little dots here where I'm going to put the countersink screws. So I can pre-drill these when I remove it. And then as I go, I'm gonna stuff some insulation in here. Fill this up with insulation. I'm just using these self-drilling wood to metal screws. You find these at Home Depot. These are inch and an eighth. Now that that's done, I can use the wood putty to fill these holes. And then while the wood putty dries, I take these panels off and put some insulation behind them and then sand down the wood putty and paint.
guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. Next episode, I'll be connecting all the solar power. And if you found this video helpful, please go ahead and hit the like button. It helps me out a lot. And I'll see you guys next time.